Doing? Yes, microphone, I assume, right? Yes, okay, is this is this on right now or it is okay? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Farron Manny, and I'm the uh, chair of the Department of Medicine and the interim program director for the Department of Internal Medicine. Uh, I want to really thank you all for coming. Um, it's a really going to be a beautiful night. I know it's a little bit warm, but I think we're in the right place. Um, I'd like to start our ceremony with a little prayer, if I may. Uh, so uh, just maybe a moment of prayer. Uh, Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight among friends and families and celebrate the beginning of a new chapter for our graduating residents. We're confident that every one of our graduates will go on and serve you and humanity to the best of their abilities, and we pray that you guide them every step of the way. Whether it be as family members, friends, or faculty, we're grateful to have been part of their professional growth during the past three years. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. May your love surround us, your spirit guide us, your voice cheer us, your peace calm us, your shield protect us, your wisdom arm us wherever you may lead us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Before we start uh, with the uh, uh, the actual ceremony, which is giving out the diplomas, I like a few things that I like to kind of cover. Uh, one is I really want to appreciate uh, and show my appreciation to every one of you for being here tonight. It's a very special night for our graduates, friends, families, faculty, uh, Dr. Oren, uh, we really appreciate the support that the graduate medical education and internal medicine has received over the years from Sisters of Mercy, the ministry, the uh, Mercy Hospital in St. Louis. Uh, tonight would not have been possible without their support, and I really, really want to uh, acknowledge that. I also want to recognize the hard work that our previous uh, program director, Dr. Jer uh, Fairchild, has done for the last seven years. Uh, we want to really acknowledge that. We want to recognize her, her contribution to this program. Uh, the same goes for Dr. Logan, who also was the previous chair of the Department of Medicine. Um, and I really want to really thank them personally for everything they've done for this program. I also like to take a, a moment of uh, remembrance for Dr. Eric Williams. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with Dr. Uh, Eric Williams, he was part of the faculty of internal medicine. Um, he was a, a cardiologist, uh, a, a devoted teacher, a devoted uh, physician. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I actually assumed my role as chair uh, only a few days after his death, so I never actually got to meet him personally, but everything I hear about, everything I've read about him, uh, I wish that I had met him, uh, and i really like to take it just a moment of, of, uh, of remembrance, maybe a moment of silence for maybe 30 seconds uh, in, 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 in remembering Dr. Williams. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, eight stellar graduates tonight uh, and one chief resident. Uh, and uh, my task is to give out the diplomas, uh, which I am more than happy to do. 
uh, it is definitely a special night for all of us. Uh, we're going to have them come up in alphabetical order of their last name. And I think uh, when we talk about alphabetical order, I think we all know who goes first, right? Um, so uh, the plan is to uh, have each uh, candidate come up. Uh, we actually um, asked them to turn in a couple of fun facts about themselves so I can read it out loud and so that everybody can be aware and uh, a little bit more familiar with the person that they are. Um, and then I also added to add my own little fun fact, and that has to do with what's in their name, in their first name. So uh, that's, that's going to be the format for those of you who like to have an outline of what the program is going to look like. So that's kind of like an outline slide, okay? So that's what we're going to do, all right? Try not to deviate from that, okay? All right. So the first candidate is Dr. Brian Ackery. Uh, Brian with a Y, okay, not I. Um, just to kind of, it, it becomes relevant as I, as I go through the program. Now, Brian actually was one of the first residents that I actually had a, a pleasure of sitting down. I think I was kind of shadowing when I first got here in October last year. And uh, my gosh, what a solid guy. What a solid guy. He was just really leading the team with finesse, with leadership, kind of a quiet but my gosh, he just really left his impression on me. Uh, you know, and I said, this is the kind of guy that I want to take, have, uh, take care of my family. Um, Brian uh, is going to go to Cuba, Missouri, where he's going to join a BJC medical group. Uh, and he's going to do primary care, which I think Cuba, uh, Missouri, is very lucky to have him. And I, you know, I might actually send some family members to Cuba. Um, it's not that far, so so keep your cell phone on, okay? Because because we may have to be sending some patients to you. Um, the fun facts about Brian, with a Y, is that he actually ran a half marathon wearing cargo shorts. <laughs> so I, I, I have not. I'm not going to ask any questions about this because that's not the purpose here. There's a limit to where the curiosity needs to end. And this is where it's gonna end. But I'll just leave it up to you guys to just see Brian in cargo shorts running half marathon. I, I, I think it would be fun to watch. And I hope it's on the YouTube because uh, I haven't had a chance to actually Google it, Brian, but I would love to see you in cargo shorts as you cross the finish line. I don't know what those cargo shorts look like. Are they ripped? Are they, where, what condition they're in? But I can tell you that it's a very unique thing to do a half marathon. I don't know very many people to do that. So that really makes it even more unique, which I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, a big part of why, why he decided to go into medicine was that he was watching the TV show Scrubs. I, you know, I really thank God we have Scrubs because <laughs> Brian would never been a doctor. He might have been in, uh, you know, wildlife, fish, you know, some type of a, uh, you know, some kind of a, you know, natural uh, park and recreation stuff. Uh, but we're really glad that uh, he watched Scrubs, which pushed him into this. And he's an avid deer hunter, he's told me. We've had discussion on this, on prion disease. Which I think it's fascinating. He gave a great grand rounds on that. I asked him about... What does he think about bear hunting in Missouri, which is something that's going to come? And he says he's never hunted bear before, but um, I don't know. He might be hunting bear in, um, in cargo shorts for I know. <laughs> that would be kind of fun to watch, too, I think. Just ideas, that's all. <laughs> and then the third kind of fun fact is Brian, B-R-Y-N. Like what, what is the origin of that? I think it's fascinating. And uh, so I, I Googled that, and I came across this uh, names.org that gives you the actual definition, origin of people's names. And, um, and it, it, if it doesn't find the actual origin or definition, it actually gives you its own definition uh, based on what people say, people log on or, or uh, post on the, on the web. So what I found, and Brian, you can definitely correct me on this, um, 
It's a, it has an English Gaelic root, and it actually connotes or means noble. Some people think it means strong. Others think that it means brave, which really, honestly, I think it describes Brian with a Y really well. But the last one that I really was like floored by was immortal God. <laughs> immortal God in cargo shorts. You can't beat that. You can't even make up this stuff. So I, I didn't know we had an immortal God as part of our program. But I do now. And I really hate to see him leave because we do need immortal gods in our program. But Brian, seriously, it's been an absolute pleasure to have known you for the few months that I've been here. You've been an amazing support to all of your colleagues, to your, the attendings, to our program. I'm really proud of you. Uh, to have chosen this program, and we wish you nothing but the best. Okay, one down. This is this may go on for uh, longer than we thought. Is that okay, Michelle? Is that okay? All right, okay. Just stop me anytime, okay? Next is the bees. After the A's is bees, and I think we all know where the bees are, right? The Baileys. Um, Anna Bailey. <laughs> Anna is, uh, is a gem for our program. Honestly, I, uh, uh, I've seen her in the hallways. My God, she goes out of her way to say hi. She goes out of her way to acknowledge the presence of others, which is absolutely amazing. She has really made an impact on our program in many ways, especially in the JFK clinic, where I am told that the entire JFK staff and patients are in mourning right now because Anna is leaving. And to me, it's like, that's, that's very impactful, Anna. And that really speaks highly of the kind of person that you are. And I can't tell you how proud we are, how lucky we are to have you in our program. Uh, I really, really uh, wish you really well. And I am really, really happy also because Anna is actually gonna stick with Mercy. She's going to go to the Mercy Clinic, and I believe is in Chippewa Street, right? In Chippewa, is it a Chippewa Mercy Clinic? Is that what it's called? And, uh, in a, you know, to me, it's like it's amazing. Uh, she has so many things to contribute to our community, to our patients. And I think Mercy is absolutely fortunate to have had her through this, her training, and then obviously be able to have her for her professional career. So, Anna, thank you. Now... The fun facts, which is I'm sure everybody's waiting for. Anna, as far as I know, never wears sh cargo shorts, so so it's going to be a little bit less less exciting maybe. But uh, she loves to bake and she loves to cook, right, Anna? Um, but you know, one of the things that that struck me when I first got here, and unfortunately with the with Eric Williams is uh, uh, passing away. Anna stepped up and she said, I am going to draw a painting of Eric. Uh, she's an absolutely amazing artist. Um, and she, in this almost like overnight, I believe, she drew an amazing uh, portrait of Eric, which actually hangs in our conference room and it's gonna be there for eternity. Um, she cares about people. She cares about everyone around her. She has a mission. She has a lot to contribute to our community and we're really glad to have her. Now, Anna, where does that name come from? Right, the curious people wanna know. And even Anna may wanna know, right? <laughs> so Anna, I did a little search on your behalf. Okay. Well, there actually, it, it, there's a controversy on the web. Oh. It could be Hebrew, Russian, or Spanish. Everybody's claiming, everybody wants, 
wants you to be part of their culture. And it may mean favor, queen, grace of God. <laughs> we got immortal God, we got a grace of God, gift of God. And I believe it, I really do. And then the last, which really amazed me, was mercy. Imagine that. Anna actually me. means it was meant to be, of course. And she didn't know it. We didn't know it. But she was destined to be mercy from the very beginning. And she wound up with mercy. And she's going to continue with mercy. But seriously, Anna, I really, really cherish your presence in our program. You have been an amazing asset you have left an indelible mark on our program, JFK Clinic especially. I understand that. But uh, the only solace that I have is that you're going to stay with Mercy. We're going to be counting on you to continue your great uh, work uh, outside of our hospital. And I think our community is going to be better because of you. Thank you, Anna. Okay, two down. We're going to skip the C's and go to D's now. And of course, uh, I think we only have one D in our program. Wilfred Diaz. Um, Wilfred, uh, Wilfred was one of the first people, residents that I actually met and sat down, just connected just like that. He said he's going to Boston. I said, I just came back from Boston. What do you want to know? <laughs> and we connected really well. Um, boy, what, a, what an amazing guy he is. You know, originally from Peru. I told him, first time we sat down, I said, I know about Machu Picchu. I love to go there. And I said, but do you know that Peruvians grow the best blueberries anywhere? And he said, no. I said, well, good thing you came here. <laughs> they got the giant blueberries from Peru. It's just amazing. And they also grill artichokes like it's absolutely amazing taste. Uh, but they also have contributed to our program through Wilfer. And I really appreciate that more than the artichokes or the blueberries or even Machu Picchu. We really are fortunate to have, to have uh, Wilfer with us. Wilfer has a very clear mission. He really wants to help people. He has been an amazing part of our program. He's helped our residents. He's been there when they need them. Very respectful. Again, it's an amazing person to have been a part of the professional uh, training of. He's going to go to Boston. He's going to go to uh, Beth Israel Deaconess, um, which is, I was at Mass General, Beth Israel Deaconess is kind of like the dark side. Um, but I didn't hold that against him. Um, everything outside of MGH is dark side, essentially. Uh, but uh, he's going to be working as a hospitalist, which I think they're really, really fortunate to have him. And I think eventually he likes, loves to be a gastroenterologist, right? And that's really his passion. Uh, and I really, really hope that he, he can um, get to where he likes to get to. But, you know, I think he's going to be an amazing hospitalist. He gave us a couple of fun facts, which I like to Do you guys like to hear the fun facts? Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not boring you. Um, am I boring you? Okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, Rolfer said that um, he likes to take music or guitar to the next level. I honestly did not know that Wilfer was a, do you play uh, electric guitar or acoustic? Oh my God, we should have had you here. Um, my bad. Um, but, you know, you can see how accomplished he is, musician. He actually is going to make a solo album, which I cannot wait to hear. He also climbed the Pastor Rui Glacier in Peru, which is really amazing. Now, it's at 5,000 meters above sea level. Uh, I have never been to Peru, so I'm not familiar with the topography there. But what was really amazing is that he actually did it running 
while most tourists and even locals either walk or ride horses. Who runs a glacier? <laughs> Wilfer. Now, I actually looked to see where's the origin of Wilfer? Where does the name come from? Well, it was one of those where I couldn't really find a definite definition, but there was uh, the, the, the default mode when you don't find a definition is to basically describe the name by each of the of the letters in the uh, in the in the word itself in the name itself. So, so I'm going to just basically describe each of your the letters in your name uh, as who you are. Is that okay with you? All right, because there's absolutely no place to go. <laughs> and I'm glad I got a wall here because yeah, yeah, uh, you know it could be dangerous. So. <laughs> so W in welfare stands for wisdom. Wisdom. That, she, that he will acquire as he ages. I stands for infinite, as in infinite are your, are your possibilities. L stands for little, as in little things you do for all of us. They're not going unnoticed. F stands for, forget cardiology, I'm going to GI. <laughs> <laughs> like there may be other people that might debate you on this. O stands for OMG. Oh my God, I got to find a place to live in Boston. <laughs> and R stands for real men. As in real men don't climb glaciers, they run over them. But seriously, uh, Wilfer, it's been an absolute pleasure to have known you the last seven or eight months. I really wish you tons and tons of success. I know you'll do well. I hope that life takes you where you want to go to uh, and just remember that we're always going to think of you and pray for you for your success thank you The next letter in the alphabet starts, it, it name is F, and I think we all know who F is. Aisha Farouk. Now, Aisha, um, she's definitely a special person. She, uh, she's quiet, but boy, she's smart. She asks really, really great questions. And uh, she, her, her, uh, just demeanor, it's enough to give patients enough hope, regardless of how sick they are. She has a great big, big smile, very supportive, not just for patients, but her colleagues. And really honestly, um, you know, it would be a person that you would say, God, I wish this person was taking care of my, my own family. Uh, Aisha has um, decided to go into critical care and the good news here there is that she's going to stay with us at Mercy, which is wonderful. So that means that we can all torture her off and on, say, you remember your past? Here it is. <laughs> Can't get too far away from us. Uh, so, but, uh, but I, uh, I'm really, really um, uh, glad that you got to where you like to get to. And... Uh, the fun facts about Asia is one is, and she told me that in the past as well, which I, you know, I was really just absolutely amazed. She actually holds the Guinness World Record. Uh, how many of us actually holds anything, much less Guinness Book of World Records? She holds it for the biggest painting by the number. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. I. I need to get, get your autograph after this because I, I, I just don't get a chance to do that. Um, and she was among the 1,500 people who painted the biggest canvas ever. Is that part of the same thing or is this different thing? The same thing. It's just amazing. And she also tells us that uh, she's been to 11 national parks in the last three years since she's been in the U.S. And she, to, she plans to visit all 63 of them. So 
That's really amazing. So you got uh, you got like 52 to go then? Is my, is my math correct? Good. I, I just want to make sure Cabernet is not affecting me in a way like that uh, my math is going to be off. So you got 52 to go. So essentially once a week, you should be able to cover in a year. Is that right? Okay. Uh, the interesting thing about Aisha is her name. Uh, A-Y-E-S-H-A. And I looked it up. Where does Asia come from? Asia is really, it's becoming popular. I mean, it seemed like it just like, I, I, I know a lot of people with that name, which is really amazing. Well, it, uh, depending on who you talk, who you, uh, you, you look the post on, it could be the Arabic, could be Hindi, or some said it was Pakistani, but that probably doesn't matter, except that the, the meaning of the word Aisha was really, to me, was, was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. One was life, the other one was solace, the other one was peace, comfort, and wish. Just amazing, it pretty much captures really what Aisha is all about. Full of life, she brings a lot of comfort, peace, solace, and on our part, we're gonna wish you a lot of well for your career, and we know that you're going to excel in everything you decide to do. Thank you for being part of the program, Aisha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move to G's now. There, there are two G's. But it's alphabetical order, so the G A N actually wins. So Manesh Gangwani. Um, Manesh, I think, was the first team. Was the resident, uh, the senior resident for the first team I actually rounded at, at Mercy when I came back. And boy, I was glad to have him um, because he was just telling me what to do. Um, because I didn't know exactly what to do. Um, uh, but Manesh, boy, he, he's got such a comforting style. My gosh, I was glad that he was the leader of the team. He was there for his interns, for his med students. Boy, he, he led the team. He let everybody speak what they wanted to speak about, answer the questions. He was there for their patients. He kept me well informed of what's going on. My gosh, I really, just, but then the first day I said, boy, I can just trust this guy. Um, I, I, uh, I was really, really impressed with his performance. Um, and I, I was, you know, I was kind of sad to see that I was only going to do seven days with him. Um, Manesh is going to go to Toledo. He's going to be a hospitalist at the University of Toledo Medical Center in Ohio. Um, I think his overall goal is to become a cardiologist, right, Manesh? So um, don't take anything personally what I said about welfare. He just said he's just not going to do cardiology. <laughs> Fun facts about Manesh is that he used to actually direct short films and ad projects. We need, we need a different ad agency for Mercy, so we might be able to call on you. And he also wanted to be a filmmaker, a director, maybe a filmmaker, which is really amazing. Um, but then he decided to go to med school. I don't know what happened. I don't know what got into you. <laughs> so he said, there is that. So I'm here, okay? And that's, uh, we're glad you're here. We're glad you changed your mind from being a filmmaker to a, being a physician. And he also won a dancing competition at one time, which is really amazing. Um, was it in cargo shorts? <laughs> no, okay. I just want to just. Um, so I looked up Manesh. Where does Manesh? Where does the name come from? Well, I, I, the word.org didn't actually have much information, but they said you can you can describe Manesh by the each of the letters in the name. So M actually stands for marvelous, as in marvelous is how others see you, Manesh. A is available as in always available to help others. And I, I observed that firsthand. N is for noble, as in noble character. 
and I can witness that. I witness that, and I can vouch to that. E stands for ejection fraction, which is what he's going to be looking at, <laughs> regardless of what the patient comes in for. It could be GI bleed. I know Manesh is going to say, what did the echo show? I got to see what the EF is. S stands for ST segment elevation. I don't care if they just have diarrhea. I need to make sure they don't have an ST segment elevation. Once a cardiologist, always a cardiologist, right? And then H is for high sensitivity CRP. For those of you that, that may not know this, it used to be popular one time. It's not so popular, but Manesh is going to think about that, like he usually does. But Manesh, really, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an absolute honor. We hope that we can call you, count on you to come and see us. Um, you know, we, we treasure the memories that you brought me last few months, and I'm sure everyone here for the last three years. Thank you and wish you nothing but the best. We still got another hour and a half, so just hang in there. You might want to get some more wine because it's just going to go really bad from here on out. Okay, the other G is, of course, Nithya Gautam. <laughs> Nithya is very quiet, but boy, she's smart. She is inquisitive. I, uh, you know, I, I look at her, she's got a smile. I just say, boy, if somebody's sick and Nithya comes in the room, I think all the trouble is going to go away. I uh, really appreciate all the things she's done for our program. She's been a great face for our program. Um, she's going to go to Tennessee, which is where I used to live also, to Jackson, Tennessee, right? And she's going to be a hospitalist at the Madison County General Hospital uh, starting, I think, August, right? Um, there are a couple of fun facts that you guys want to hear about, Nithya? Okay, just want to make sure because I don't want to bore you. If I'm boring you, just have more whiskey or something. Or the wine's not going to cut it. She's actually an artist and a dancer, uh, which is really amazing. I have didn't know that. Um, she's a food lover and... She's open to the world cuisine, and um, I'm sure she probably likes to experiment with things. Uh, we love to have your failures as well as your successes with your food, because um, I'm sure you're really good at it. Um, but more seriously, I had to look up the Nithia. Where does the name come from? So according to names.org, which is the very most reliable website that, that ever, 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 is that uh, it's of an Indian origin, and it could mean eternal, constant, always, and it's also the name of a goddess. Did you know that? She knew that. <laughs> Did you all know that? You know, it's a recurring theme. We have nothing but immortal gods, gods, goddesses. No wonder this is a special program. I mean, I, I see like halo around everybody's heads now or something. <laughs> but it also means truth and love. And really honestly, Nithya, we wish you nothing but success. We know that this is exactly what your patients will see, truth and love. We know that you will help them get better. And we know that it will be a great asset to the hospital where you're going to go be working at. And again, thank you for all the years that you gave us. Thank you. Now we'll go to H, and uh, I believe there's only one H. Katie Harvey. K 
Katie, um, the first thing I think that was the second day I was here, uh, I was told not to call her Catherine. <laughs> I'm not making Katie. It's like I think I think it's, a, it's Katie. Okay, okay. But well, we have a Catherine too. You guys are making it really confusing here. How am I going to keep this straight? You know. Um, well, what can I say about Katie? Katie uh, is really. Uh, it's an amazing all-around physician who I think the program is extremely proud of. Um, talk about the spirit of volunteerism. Wanted to be one of the first people who wanted to see how she could help with vaccination effort for COVID. Talk about, you know, being really conscientious, really taking care of her patients, really going all out to help her colleagues. Extremely involved in medical education. We just did a little session on conflict management together. You just, you just tell Katie and she just runs with it. And you say, Katie, oh, slow down a little bit. Here, let's. <laughs> but it's just really absolutely amazing to see a, a person like this who really cares about medicine for the right reasons. I am absolutely honored to have Katie as our chief resident starting July. We really look forward to working with her I think our program is going to be extremely um, uh, happy and, and feel the benefits of her presence. We have uh, tons of things that we have on her list to do, and she doesn't even know most of them. But we're going we're gonna to tell her that on July 2nd. Um, but uh, more seriously, it's, it's going to be amazing, I think. And again, I, I'm really, really happy that she's going to be with us for another year as a chief resident. After that, uh, I believe she's going to be joining primary care at Mercy, um, which is great for the, for the system. Um, we're not gonna take the likes of Katie for granted. Um, and, but I also wanna share a couple of fun facts about Katie. Is it, does anybody wanna know fun facts about Katie? Okay, I, I think I better hurry up because before they, I lose the audience here. She actually runs marathons, and she is qualified for Boston Marathon twice. Boston Marathon is really tough to get into, and I, you know, it's really amazing. Um, determination, hard work, and that really spills over to her professional life as well. She also has another fun fact, and I guess she was doing gymnastics. She did a standing back tuck at her first job interview. Now, for those of you who don't know what back tuck is, you need to just look at the YouTube and see what that is. But basically, you just go, you flip backwards just for no reason. <laughs> Absolutely no reason. Uh, I know about that because I have a daughter who does the exact same thing. She used to go down on the, in the grocery store aisles doing back tucks. And I go, you can't be doing this. There's ketchup here, there's mustard here, there's pickles here. I can't have to, exp I don't want to explain to people why my daughter's doing back tucks in schnooks. That just doesn't, so anyway, I, uh, this back tuck kind of gave me a little bit of flashback. Um, I don't know why she would be doing the first job interview, but I hope it was fun. Um, and, and you got the job. Unbelievable, she got the job. Okay, so. Um, it obviously worked. I also looked into Katie. Where did, where does the origin come from? So I stayed away from Catherine. I just went for K-A-T-I-E. And sure enough, name.org, which is the most reliable name uh, website, uh, gave me uh, this uh, interpretation. It's English origin, and it means pure to the heart, pure and clean, graceful, truthful, honest. That really captures Katie. Very befitting, Katie. We really look forward to seeing you grow as chief resident and really contribute to our community, your patients. And again, we're proud that you are a graduate of our program. Thank you, Katie. Congratulations. 
Uh, we're going to enter into the W zone now. I don't know. I don't think there are many, too many W's in our program. Eric Wu. <laughs> What can I say about Eric? My gosh. He walks into the room, everybody becomes silent. He has that effect on people, like God just walked in and you better behave. But boy, what a gentle man he is. He, I love Eric. He, he comes to my office, we talk about the cases and I just like, I'm glad he came in. I really, really, appreciate what Eric has done for this program. He has helped the program. He's helped individuals. He's there for everyone. I have heard nothing but just amazing remarks about Eric. I am absolutely tickled that he's going to stay with Mercy. He's going to be a Mercy hospitalist. So we're going to be going to him and say, this is your past. Don't forget us. We really, really appreciate uh, what he's done, and we even, again, more appreciative that he's going to stay within our hospital. Now, the fun fact about uh, Eric is that he actually thinks that the hospitalist job is not challenging enough. <laughs> it's just too easy. He's going to have so much time on his hand. He's actually going to go to seminary school next year. Who among us decides to do that after you've done three years of residency? Well, Eric can do it. Not many people can do it, but Eric can do it. And this is a special person that he is. He also says that he spent his whole vacation during COVID reading, uh, COVID uh, time, reading papers on cooking or cookie baking and bake cookies every day that week, trying to perfect them. Now, I don't, I'm not going to ask him, how did it go, Eric? <laughs> I would have loved to taste your failures as well as your successes. So maybe when you get overloaded with seminary school, hospitalist obligations, maybe you can cook for something, some, some cookies for us. So we can be the judge. So then I looked up Eric. The name, Eric. Well, names.org, which is the most reliable source on the web, says it's Norwegian. <laughs> That's what the names.org says. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I'm just a messenger. But I don't really care what the origin is. I want to know what he means. What it means is strong, ruler, leader, kind, gentle, loving, king, great ruler. All those things really resonate. The last one that I actually saw, I said, boy, that really sums it, sums it up, is great man. That's who Eric is. Patients are going to be absolutely fortunate to have Eric take care of them. And it's been absolutely our fortune to have had Eric as part of our program. You have left your mark on the program. Thank you, Eric. So this was the our eight graduates. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention Jennifer Barkerstad, who was our chief resident for this year. Um, Jennifer was an absolute pleasure to work with. She took me on rounds, tell me where the workroom was. I consulted her many times on AC ACGME rules. What are we supposed to do here? And she was more than happy to tell me. I appreciated her advice. 
she was there for all of us. Uh, it was seamless. I mean, she really, really was part of the team. She gave herself. Um, we asked Jennifer as well. We didn't have to, but we did. Uh, what are some fun facts about you, Jennifer? Well, um, for those of you who have watched or have seen Sound of Music, and have you guys, anybody here watched Sound of Music, from like 1960s musical, very famous. She actually played Liesl in the Sound of Music. Unbelievable. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you remember, did you sing? Would you like to just do a little singing? <laughs> I have not listened to Liesl for a long time. But it's unbelievable. I, you know, I, I can see Liesl and Jennifer. Just vivacious. Happy, driven, purpose really embodies who Jennifer really is. And then I said, okay, before I have a, a close my impression of Jennifer, let's see what her name actually says. So I go to names.org, the most reliable source on the, on the web. So it comes from an English or Welsh or Celtic uh, origin. It means fair lady, fair woman. But the one that I really liked was one of a kind. And that's who Jennifer is, one of a kind. Thank you, Jennifer, for giving us the pleasure of working with you. And she's going to actually become a hospitalist at Mercy, which means that we're gonna get to bug her, keep asking her to sing for us as Liesl. Right in our day. Thank you, Jennifer. It was just a token of appreciation. We gave Jennifer a gift. It's uh, it's nothing, but we hope that you'll remember us. Uh, next is we have an award. Every year, faculty is chosen by our residents. We have an amazing array of faculty, subspecialists, generalists. The common thread is that everyone is absolutely dedicated to this teaching program. Whether they get an award or not, their work is not going unnoticed. We really appreciate everyone. The, the residents do pick the one that they have been most affected by, impacted by. Don't tell them who it is yet. Okay. One of the residents is do it. So we're gonna have one of the residents, Dr. Wu, Dr. Wu come up and announce who the faculty of the year is. Hey guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get the uh, great privilege of uh, saying a couple of words um, about this faculty member. Um, first of all, all faculty in all the residents' lives and uh, our training and education. Um, but I wanna say a couple words about uh, this particular one um, and how much they've meant to uh, my personal education growth. And like I said, I think the entire residency shares my same sentiment. Um, obviously with one person, you can always say a lot of things, but uh, if I were to sum this faculty member up in, uh, in one word, I would choose the word thoughtful. Um, this faculty member has a reputation of being incredibly knowledgeable, huge knowledge base, um, always able to come up with the right things to say, the right things to do, um, incredible clinical acumen, um, and uh, you know, always in touch with the newest guidelines and uh, best practices, uh, probably even the ones that are published yesterday. So um, clearly their mind is full of thoughts, full of medical thoughts. Uh, but when I say thoughtful, that's obviously not what I mean. Um, this faculty member 
has been incredibly thoughtful with the ways that they engage in this residency program. Um, they're thoughtful when it comes to advocating for residents, planning lectures, adapting their teaching styles, addressing our weaknesses or weak points and gaps in our learning that, uh, that we didn't know about or never knew were important. Um, they have changed our schedules all the time, pulled us off rotations that we didn't feel were fruitful, and uh, created brand new rotations that were uh, incredibly helpful in giving us a good breadth and depth of knowledge. Um, so yeah, just incredible in advocating for the residents. Um, they're also thoughtful about giving really great feedback um, to the residents, whether it's constructive criticism aimed to uh, uh, grow the residents and push us and stretch us, or um, just knowing that residency is a long, hard slog and uh, quite the grind and just building us up and encouraging us. Um, so definitely um, thoughtful in their feedback. They're also thoughtful in other aspects of medicine, whether that's um, the social aspects of healthcare. Um, this faculty member is thoughtful in the ways that they advocate for patients and even entire patient populations. Um, and bringing those social issues to the forefront of our learning as well um, and has really impacted me in that way. I'm also very thoughtful in addressing hospital policies, being involved in various committees, uh, has a strong devotion and dedication to quality improvement. Um, so overall, this faculty member is just thoughtful in, in the ways that they approach the entirety of medicine. Um, this thoughtfulness has been uh, such a great example to me uh, such a great example to all the residents in the program. Um, and so it's been an immense privilege to learn under this faculty member over the course of my three years in residency. So uh, it is with great honor that I present uh, the Faculty of the Year Award to Dr. Garland. I was like looking around the room wondering who was going to get announced and I was thinking of all the different names and then my name was spoken and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I just want to say that as much as being an educator <clears throat> is an opportunity to teach, it's more than that an opportunity to learn. And I was looking at our graduating class today and thinking how many of you I had a chance to interview before you even started in residency and seeing that spark that I saw in each one of you during that little brief interview that we had and see how it has come to fruition after three years of incredibly hard work by every one of you. And I'm so proud to have been a tiny part of that and to know that every single day that I have the privilege to teach is the day that I learn from every one of my colleagues, every one of the incredible faculty members in this department, every single physician. Medicine is unusual in that we're a teacher of a student for three years and then we're a partner of a colleague for the next 30 or 40 or 50. And so every one of the residents today that we had a chance to have a tiny moment of interaction with is that person who's going to be our partner and our consultant and our colleague and our fellow member of our profession for decades to come and it is such a privilege. There is nothing that's a greater privilege than this. So thank you all tonight. Congratulations, Catherine. <clears throat> I really, really appreciate all this she does for our program. Goes beyond the expected um, crucial element of our program. Thank you. Um, the next item has to do with our program. You know, our program, you know, you get on the website and it looks great. Uh, it's kind of like a car looks great. But what's under the hood, right? What's the engine, right? Well, the engine actually in a program happens to be not me, not the program director or the chair. It's the program coordinator. That's the engine, okay? I can just tell you that. I'm probably the... But without the program coordinator, the engine program would go nowhere. 
And that's how I would describe Michelle, Michelle Kim. She's the coordinator. She is the uh, kind of like the nucleus and we're a bunch of electrons going around, okay? And I was happy to hear that just uh, a few weeks ago, we were celebrating her 15 years with Mercy, which is really amazing. And in So Michelle, I want to echo Dr. Mannion's words. You know, just say what an incredible gem you've been, and an incredible resource for the uh, for the program. Um, fortunately, you know, the postman. You know, even though this uh, honor was this milestone of 15 years was reached in May, the postman knew uh, not to trust me with this uh, until just before the graduation ceremony. So that's why it's being presented a little bit late. Uh, I didn't have the foresight to think about uh, asking for fun facts. Uh, fortunately, my wine ran out long before Dr. Mannion stopped talking, so I was able to look up the name. Uh, so I did, I did. What other source could I use? Yes, yes. Uh, and of course, uh, so Michelle is considered to be a, the female derivation of Michael, and Michael is an English or Hebrew name for who is like God. And clearly, when I... class it's clearly a question you asked all the time during the interview process <laughs> so with that I just want to present you with a, a plaque for mercy celebrating your 15 years of service here and that's for you, Thank you so and there's also a catalog here you get to select your free uh, 15th anniversary gift Thank from you. mercy but thanks again Thank so much for all that you've done yeah. Everyone, um, on behalf of all the residents, um, Dr. Anna Bailey would like to come up and also present Michelle with a gift. Um, I can speak for everyone here in the residency and say that Michelle is truly the glue that keeps us all together. Um, throughout COVID, she's been truly an advocate for our wellness and um, we can't thank her enough for everything she does for us every day. So, um, Michelle, Anna would like to give you a gift. On behalf of all the residents, <laughs> because you are just that wonderful good, more, more than just <laughs> essential, you are a very integral part of the program and for us. And you know how we talk all the time. <laughs> so I had to do something. So when Dr. Mayan close your ears. So usually I don't pay attention to teens. So this one particular post, I was like, Oh, do a presentation? I hate them, but for Michelle, absolutely. So I was the first one to respond and I was like, let me do the honors, okay? So like a few other people in the program, you yourself can now have a Dr. Bailey's original. <laughs> and wrapping your favorite color. <laughs> My favorite color as well. Okay, I'm gonna reveal it to you first, and then you can turn it around to them. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Wow. That's just <laughs> for you. And I'll sign the back for you. <laughs> tell, me my own, tell me my own picture. On behalf of all the residents, not just me. Thank Bye. you guys. Thank okay. you so much. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you can keep it there, you can wrap it back up however I you will. Thank you. Okay. You can put it back in there and we'll tie it up for you. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do. Thank you so much. And then I'll let you have this. Yes, that'd be great. And I'll tie it back up later. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I'll just say a few words. So thank you so much. You guys, I appreciate that so much. Um, this really is a night to celebrate our graduates. Um, <laughs> try not to cry. <laughs> um, this, this month comes around every year and it's bittersweet. Um, 
every year I think I'm going to hold it together <laughs> and I don't, but you know, you guys, I'm just so proud of you guys of what you've accomplished. And um, I know you guys get so excited at the end of the year and it's usually about turning in your pagers to me, <laughs> but you don't have pagers anymore. <laughs> Um, and so this year I've been, you know, like trying to figure out how to like hold you guys back another six months and um, I haven't figured it out yet. So I keep teasing like Anna, you know, <laughs> how am I going to keep you here another six months? And um, but, you know, in all seriousness, you guys have done such an incredible job. Um, I'm so proud of what you guys have accomplished. And I'm so thrilled that some of you are staying here at Mercy and I get to see you guys. Um, and those who are not, I just remember to keep in touch with us. Um, and congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for everything you've done for us and continue to do. Um, I have some closing remarks, but I also like to turn the mic to anyone, family members, anybody who wants to say anything. Dr. Robertson, <laughs> Dr. Robertson, please. I think you're forgetting us now. I'll make sure we get through this in, in the right order. Can you, can you uh, look up Nate and, and, and name.org real quick? Sarcastic. All right. Uh, well, Good evening, everybody. I'm Anir Robertson. I'm one of the associate program directors. Um, I have the honor of giving out a couple of awards tonight. Uh, but before the, we do that, um, I know the introvert in me probably won't get back up uh, when Dr. Mannion opens up the mic to everybody else here. So uh, I first and foremost want to thank all the loved ones that are here, uh, not only for supporting our graduates tonight, but for supporting them for the last however many countless years on this journey. Um, you really can't make it through this without having the support system behind you. Um, and so we really appreciate everything you've done uh, to help them along the way. Um, I also want to thank you for sharing them with us for the last three years, um, letting us be a part of their lives and them being a part of our lives. Um, it really is extremely enriching to us as faculty members to have the opportunity to work with them, see them grow, um, and allow them to teach us along the way as well. Um, so thank you all for that. Um, to the graduates, you will be greatly missed. Um, your impact on this program goes beyond what you can imagine. Um, the legacy that you live, leave behind will live on in your colleagues um, that follow behind, uh, and they will continue to hold up that, uh, that mantle. Um, whether it's Brian and his kind of self-deprecating humility, um, with Anna and her ability to tell you when you're doing things well, telling when you're not, tell you when you're not doing things well, but doing it kindly. Um, Will for for his willingness to always question and ask further. Um, Manesh, I'm not really sure what to say because I think he was always looking at his next research project, so I didn't really know where to go. Um, Nithya, I'll miss your quiet unassuming smile on rounds when everything is hitting the fan and you're like, no, I got this. Um, Aisha, your calm, quiet strength uh, that you brought every day. Katie, um, your willingness to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to make yourself better uh, each and every day. Uh, Eric, your laugh. Uh, I have a very different experience than what Dr. Mannion has. I feel like instead of everybody getting quiet, you have a way of maybe riling people up, but in a good way, uh, with a very infectious laugh, um, but also a dedicated heart. Uh, and uh, I just really am thankful for each and every one of you. Um, you will be the class that kind of lives with me forever because I was an intern attending. I was a first year attending coming to Mercy when you all started. So um, it's been a very fun journey to grow along side each and every one of you and thank you for allowing me to be part of your past for the last three years here. Um, with that said, uh, I have the great honor tonight of presenting a couple of awards. The first one, do you have the BK Werner? First one is the BK Werner. Um, Dr. Werner predates me, um, predates most everybody, so I had to go find it's Dr. Logan here. He may be one of the only uh, that has the institutional knowledge of Dr. Werner, or at least that I could track down. Um, Dr. Werner was a pulmonologist here who um, was a very kind and compassionate physician uh, who was very dedicated to teaching as well as uh, research and, and furthering education. Um, and so 
this award is meant to exemplify somebody who has that dedication to teaching, um, that dedication to uh, compassionate care. Um, I think all eight of our graduates are more than exemplary candidates for that award. Um, but this year's winner is Dr. Katie Harvey. Uh, next up, I have the opportunity to present the Intern of the Year Award. Um, this year's Intern of the Year, um, coincidentally, is not here. I think he's maybe running a little late. Kidding. Um, it is uh, it's just a joke because Michelle tells me he's sometimes running a little late. So <clears throat> uh, with that said, uh, this year's Intern of the Year is uh, Dr. Preston Mundahank. So congratulations to Preston. And if you see him, tell him well done. I have to lower the microphone. Dr. Robertson's a little taller than I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Forget about that. Um, uh, we had axe throwing at our recent intern retreat, and I watched Dr. Robertson hurl axes with such focus. Having never thrown one before, within the fourth throw, they were all being buried to the hilt, and I just saw Vikings marauding. I, it's terrible, but that is what I saw. And I did look up Nate's name on names.org, and keeping with a the theme, it is Gift of God. <laughs> so um, I'm presenting two more awards today, our last two awards of the night before we close. So we have the PGY2 and PGY3 of the Year Award. This year's PGY2 of the Year. Um, is going to a resident, and it could go to any of our residents. Our residents are all fantastic. We're like Lake Wobegon here. Everyone is um, practically perfect and above average. But this PGY2 combines a really kind heart, a ready smile, a willingness to lift up her peers, um, and fantastic clinical acumen in a, in a energetic package um, that brightens all of our days. So this candidate was chosen by both peers and faculty members as the PGY2 of the year. Uh, I will do a little giveaway now. Um, as a new uh, recovering hospitalist primary care doctor, um, ophthalmology is my least favorite complaint in the office. And this year's PGY2 had the diagnosis of the uh, semester in clinic, correctly diagnosing a snapback injury from the elastic on a face mask removal that ruptured someone's globe or eye. And, and this resident acted, correctly diagnosed the problem, and saved this patient's vision. So that is one example of the amazing things she does every day. And I would like to call to the front to receive your PGY2 of the Year Award, Dr. Preston. And our final award of the night goes to the PGY3 uh, of the Year Award. And again, as we have spent many times discussing tonight, all of our graduating PGY3s are amazing and incredible. But this individual is chosen by peers and faculty as the most outstanding member of their class. This physician embodies brilliance, doggedness, energy in the face of the most tiring circumstances, um, and a ready smile to greet every challenge. Um, I often, uh, in clinic, find myself speaking with this resident. I may go through a plan, and the resident will quietly smile and go, you know, I'm not sure if that's going to work, Dr. Garland. And I have to stop and think, because she's probably right, because she knows her patients inside and out from the day she started, made it her business to know every patient on her panel thoroughly and completely and everything about their lives. So um, an emblem of outstanding care 
to her patients, her colleagues, and incredible contributions to the program. This year's PGY3 of the Year Award goes to Dr. Harvey. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations to all the, uh, all the residents who uh, very deservedly got these awards. Again, we have a lot of outstanding physicians out there and their work is not going unnoticed. Um, okay, well, um, we're through the first half of the program. We're actually there now. Um, what can I say to close this? I just want to reflect on my own professional life. Um, I'm not going to go all to, to all the details, but just to kind of reflect on where I started and where I'm winding up. Um, I actually started working at Mercy 35 years ago, fresh out of fellowship infectious diseases. Um, I came here first time for the same reason I came the second time. And the first time was I felt that it was a very nourishing culture that took uh, academics very seriously, medical education very seriously. I wanted to be around people who love to teach, who love to learn. I think uh, medical educators love to, to teach, but in some ways I think we're very slow learners. We just always wanna learn more. And that's really what brought me here. Um, I came here and I quickly realized that I was really walking among giants. Uh, some of you may remember Dr. Dick Ryder, who was the head of the internal medicine department um, back in the 60s and 70s, I believe. And you see his pictures, actually. His picture is up on the, one of the conference rooms in, in the library as well. Brilliant man. The most the kindest person and I had the really absolute pleasure to get to know him. Dr. Patrick Henry, who was the uh, the chair of the medicine when I actually came, absolutely dedicated to medical education, great advocate for the residency program, for the uh, specialists as well as uh, uh, other faculty. And I really uh, felt that the program was dedicated to teaching in a community setting where there is so much action, where the real world actually occurs. Um, it was 35 years ago, and you might think, well, a lot of things have changed since 35 years. Yes, some things have changed, but the core of who we are as physicians really hasn't changed. Sometimes we have to kind of remind ourselves about why we go into this profession. I can tell you that not everyone can do what we can, what we do daily. Last I checked, maybe a million physicians that are licensed to practice in US. Not all of them are practicing medicine. And there are probably about 200 million adults, 25 or older in US. So less than 1% of people actually can do what we're doing. Jeff Bezos cannot take care of a patient. Elon Musk probably will run away from a patient. These are brilliant minds, but they cannot take care of patients. They are not the right fit for the, for the profession. So in some ways, it's a privilege to be able to do things that essentially no one else can do. And I never forget that. It's an absolute honor to be able to help another person or be in a position to help another person day in, day out, and be there for them, and then also get paid for it, which is really amazing. Osler, Sir William Osler, was a hero of mine, and he is older than I am. He practiced back in late 1800s, father of modern medicine. And I would like to kind of leave you with what he said over 100 years ago which still resonates, at least for me, it resonates with how medicine should be practiced. Ozer said, be calm and strong and patient. 
Meet failure and disappointment with courage. Rise superior to the trials of life and never give in to hopelessness or despair. In danger, in adversity, cling to your principles and ideals. The practice of medicine is an art, not a trade. A calling, not a business. A calling in which your heart will be exercised equally with your head. Thank you all for coming. Absolute pleasure to be part of the ceremony. And, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy the rest of the evening. Sorry it took a little bit longer, but you all know about names.org now. <laughs> Thank you all. For all the graduating residents, we're gonna take a, a group photo up here in front of the table. And um, on your way out, make sure you pick up the gift bag with your name on it that's on the table in front of the elevators. Thanks, everybody.